high. So they're going to check out a number of uh, limitations or problems with the uh, gear comparison and guitar comparison videos, you know, like mine. Uh, I think it's a great concept, obviously, since I'm, I'm doing it. But th there are a number of uh, limitations and uh, things you need to uh, consider and, and you need to know when, when you watch it. So today we're going to go through basically 10, 10 uh, problematic things of uh, guitar gear comparison videos. All right, let's go. Let's say that you have two uh, guitar rigs that you're going to compare. Uh, then the one that sounds the loudest is always going to be uh, the most attractive one. Or almost regardless of uh, how the, the other sonic qualities. Louder is always, it's always perceived as better. So it's really important that you match the volume so, that, so they're equally loud. But that's much harder than you may think because what are you going to match? Are, are you going to match the... Uh, the, you know, the average level or the transients. Because if, if, if one sound is, is uh, really compressed, if one of the rigs is really compressed, then, then you can make it sound really loud without clipping. The one that has really large transients, you need to put that way down so it's, it's, it's punchier, it's more dynamic. But the average level is a lot lower. So, so uh, you're not going to be able, without post-processing in terms of, e, of, of compression, you're not going to be able to uh, uh, make them see, these two seem equally loud. And that's a problem when you uh, compare amps or speakers on YouTube. Another problem when you compare two rigs is that the, uh, the sequence in which you uh, put different sounds is going to determine which sound you like, the best, you like uh, more. You know, uh, uh, if you go from one sound to another, it may uh, either sound like it's being muffled or maybe it sounds like something opens up or, you know, you can use this in music, transitions from one sound to another, that, that gives you a good feeling. Uh, so, so uh, and, and, and in comparisons, it's a bad thing, of course. So, so, so it, to be uh, fair, you need to kind of... Uh, put them in sequences that favors uh, both sounds. Because there, there is a content, there is a place in a sequence, so there is a context for almost any sound that will make it sound good. Then when you compare two guitars or two amps or whatever it is, you're, you're gonna first play the riff on one of the rigs, record it, and then do the same on the other rig. And that will, of course, favor the first rig because you're probably playing something that that uh, that, that feels good on that rig, but may, may be really hard to play on the other rig. Um, so, so to be fair, there you you need to kind of uh, uh, develop riffs for for both rigs and play it on the other one. Uh, but this is the problem, uh, and related to this is another question that I know that you have. Uh, you guys have brought up a number of times, na namely loopers, you know, to, to uh, record uh, record a riff uh, in the looper and then pl play the amps using that and, and then make it uh, more fair. Uh, but that, that's the next point here. Uh, I, 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 don't, I don't think that the amp amps should be played the same. You know, one, one rig benefits from a certain playing style and another from another playing style. So, so you, you, may, you may have to, um, th there is a different, the optimal way to play differs from one amp to another. And that's why, why I'm, I'm not using loopers because, because I, I, I try to play both amps, you know, with the pick attack and with the uh, uh, pressure and so on that, that makes it sound as good as possible. And that, of course, introduces a, a huge subjective element to it. Then when it comes to comparing two speakers, uh, you need to have a, a consistent uh, mic po position. And I usually place the mic where the dust cap meets the cone. Uh, and that sounds great for many speakers, but not all speakers. Uh, you know, they're, they're, some speakers are harder to mic 
you know, they're, 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 they're not very robust, but there are sweet spots where they sound really good. Uh, but but uh, it's, uh, that, that would uh, require a very long video, because then you would have to, these are the sweet spots on, on, of, of the first speaker, and these are the sweet spots of the other speaker. And that's kind of a subjective thing as well. Uh, but that, that's a limitation of having the, speak, uh, the microphone at the exact same place. Uh, so so you, that critique, you need to direct against that. Then, of course, this is all completely subjective. You know, how, how things sound, uh, what nomenclatura, you know, what words you should use to describe things. All this is very subjective, which, which m makes it... Uh, hard to discuss these things, and, and that's one of the reasons why, why I seldomly draw, draw conclusions myself. I, I, I rely on the comment section, so have as, as many people with as many points of view uh, doing the commenting. I, I think that, that that is more true than me um, doing the comments, because I, I, I uh, my taste is is always. <laughs> I'm not going to say evolving because it, it, it goes back and forth. Tomorrow I may think something completely different. Uh, I, I think it's like that for, for many people. So it's important that, that, that you get many opinions to, to, to learn about because uh, different people are, are in different phases when it comes to this. Uh, another challenge when it comes to uh, guitar videos on YouTube is, is uh, post-processing. I, I try to use as little post-processing as possible. Uh, but sometimes it, it, a small uh, amount of uh, reverb can make it easier to hear the original sound. So the kind of the, the treble or mid-range or whatever it is is kind of bouncing back at you. So, so it pops out better than, than it would have otherwise, especially, especially in, in, in the stereo image. You can use it. Uh, but, but it can be tempting to use too much treble. And, and, and I know some YouTubers even use uh, uh, delay on, on their videos. And, and I think that, that uh, the, the special richness that comes from a delay is, is, is can kind of obscure the, the real, uh, you know, the real uh, special quality of, of the whatever equipment it is that you're demonstrating. But, it, but it's a, it's a trade-off. You need to do some pro post-processing, but not too much. Then there is a, actually one. Uh, uh, claimed limitation that I don't agree with, and that is the resolution of YouTube, uh, of YouTube in general. You know, that, that uh, the uh, compression, the YouTube algorithm would, would compress the sound so, so, so it, it becomes uh, hard to distinguish things. And, and, and uh, I really think it's, it's uh, good enough for almost any comparisons. If you have something with lots of air in it, you know, some, I don't know, some pad or some I don't know, a flute or something. Maybe because there are lots of really, you know, over 10 kilohertz. If that's the, a big part of the sound, then of course, maybe the, the compression is, uh, can be a problem. But then again, I mean, most people listen to music over, uh, you know, streaming services like Spotify, for instance. It, I don't know, is, is the diff, is, isn't that basically as compressed as YouTube? I may be wrong about that, though.